Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel if you are new. Hello, my name is V. I post now tutorials every Thursday and Sunday at 8.15 a.m. Central Time. Getting right into today's video, I am starting off by prepping my practice hand. We are applying the Universal Tips from Not Polished. These are full sculpted, pre-shaped in the stiletto shape. I'm just carefully applying those to my practice hand using the Young Nails Brush on Glue. And you want to make sure you are applying these to the perfect fit of the natural nail bed. If they are too small, it can cause lifting. If they are too big, it can cause discomfort. So make sure you are putting a good size tip and basically you just want it to fit perfectly from side to side. I'm just going to go ahead and apply those. I am going to be focusing on medium to short length nails for today's video. I got tons of requests recently for that length and I know I focus a lot on longer nails, but I feel like certain designs just look better with long nails. This is typically what I cut my tips to. <laughs> That's still a little bit long, so I'm going a little bit shorter, and I feel like that is perfect to my liking. Again, this is my interpretation of medium to short length nails. Everybody has their own version of it. I feel like this is kind of like the average length that most clients typically get. So I'm just using my craft scissors to trim off that tip. And a good way of kind of making sure you are cutting them all the same length is to grab the tip that you cut first and then use that as a kind of ruler to cut the next ones. Now that I have cut them to the length that I want, we are going to be shaping those tips. So for this step, I am using my Tammy Taylor peel and stick file and I'm just lightly filing both sides and then the tip. A lot of the time when you cut the length off, you might cut it a little bit slanted or it might round off a little bit. So I just wanna make sure that I am shaping those into my perfect shape. That kind of helps with a flawless acrylic application. And then it also helps at the end when you go into file once again, you don't have to do too much filing. Now for today's video, I am going to be using a white acrylic. So I wanted to make sure that I blend that tip. I do not do this in every set of nails that I do. It kind of just depends on what color I'm using. If I'm using clear or a light sheer color, I try to blend that together just so that the application goes on smoothly and there's no crazy ridges that you can see through the powder. So we're gonna start off by submerging our brush into our monomer and then lightly picking up a medium sized bead of acrylic. And we're starting off in the middle section. I like to lightly tap it into place. This is probably my favorite way of applying acrylic. It makes it super easy and you don't have to do too much work. So I'm just making sure that I'm just very, very lightly patting it into place, cleaning up the sides. And then I am adding just a little bit more on the tip because I feel like it is a little bit on the thin side. And then we're going to be working that product up very very light pressure blending it upwards while still cleaning the sides as you pat down the acrylic you'll see it kind of bulge out on the sides and you want to make sure you are tucking that back in to have your shape nice and good last bead of acrylic goes in the cuticle area i place it just a little bit down and then i push it upwards holding the finger in a downward position that's going to be your best bet the product is going to naturally flow downwards into the existing acrylic versus into the cuticle area. If you have your acrylic flow into your cuticle area, chances are you're not going to fully be able to clean that off. 
which can cause lifting and you want to make sure you avoid that. Again, just trying to fix up that shape, blending it all together, making sure that it's nice and smooth. This also helps with your filing process at the end so you don't have to do too much filing. Now I haven't done an acrylic nail tutorial for beginners in a really long time, so I figured I'm doing a shorter set of nails. I'll kind of run by it very quickly on today's video to kind of give a good refresher. And if you're a beginner nail tech, this should help you just a little bit. It's not super in depth, but I feel like just seeing the entire picture kind of helps a lot versus seeing me apply it. So I am using the Not Polish Acrylic for today's video along with that I'm using their acrylic brush I feel like products in general do make a huge difference when it comes to your application whether we want to accept it or not a lot of people say you don't have to buy expensive products to get a really good result and I agree with that however it does make your life a lot easier if you are using good quality products so not polish is definitely a really good brand to venture out to once you feel you are ready to make that investment definitely recommend it even if you get your base colors first that is always a great start so again submerging my brush into my monomer lightly tapping excess off and then i'm going to be picking up my medium sized bead of acrylic placing that in the middle section very very lightly tapping it into place and as you can see, I'm also moving my finger wherever I feel I need better view. So you'll see me working on one side and then I move it kind of to where I can really see what I'm doing. It is going to help tremendously if you guys are struggling. Don't feel like you need to hold your finger in one specific position because I feel like you're basically setting yourself up for failure. So make sure you are moving the client's finger or hand to help you give them a good set of nails. Again, cuticle area, you wanna make sure you are holding the finger in a downward position and really cleaning up that product. And I'm just adding a little bit more in the middle section because I felt like it needed a little bit extra thickness and then just gently patting it into place, blending it out with the existing acrylic. Now one of the main things to get your acrylic application down very well is definitely going to be your liquid to powder ratio when it comes to picking up beads. You hear me say all the time medium sized bead of acrylic, small bead, large bead, but if you truly understand what that is, that's gonna help you a ton versus just kind of going in without knowing what I'm talking about. I do have a video fully in depth on that specific topic, which I feel like will help you a ton if you are struggling in that area. But when I tell you it is really important to have that ratio down perfect, it honestly makes a huge difference. You're going to pick up the perfect bead with the perfect consistency to be able to get the perfect application. And that is exactly what you want. It helps with your time. It helps with the retention of the nails. So definitely take your time, practice your liquid to powder ratio. It's gonna make a huge difference. Invest in some really good products. That's also going to help a ton and you will be on your way to success. So again, medium sized bead of acrylic, blending that downwards. And then you can see me kind of dip my brush back into my monomer as I feel like I need a little bit more time to work with the product. That's gonna give it a little bit longer to work with. If you're working with a dry brush, it's going to speed up your process. So just a quick little tip on that as well.
Now, once everything is nice and dry and you hear that clicking sound, that is what you wanna hear. If it sounds a little bit more on the muted side, that means you need to give it a little bit more time to dry. But once everything is nice and dry, you're able to hear that clicking noise. You can go ahead and start filing. For this, I am sharing with you guys my e-file process. I am using the Kiara Sky rechargeable e-file for this step. Along with that, I'm using the 5-in-1 bit from their website as well in the color rose gold medium grit. And I start by gently filing around the cuticle area and then I go vertically up and down very carefully with very light pressure, just trying to smooth out that surface as best as possible. If you don't have an e-file or you are not fully comfortable using it, always remember you can use a hand file, basically the same process. Just be a little bit more careful because hand files for whatever reason can be a little bit more tricky to work with as they are a lot bigger and you can nick the cuticle area very easily if you do not season the file. And always remember to hold your client's hand in a very still position as best as possible and make sure you are holding your e-file very well as well. I'm going in with my hand file. Again, Tammy Taylor peel and stick file and I'm just filing the sides. At this point is when you wanna try to perfect that shape. And of course, as you get more practice, it's gonna become a lot easier. So I'm just going from side to side, making sure that I'm not over filing one side or the other. Now another really good thing and helpful way of getting the perfect shape is to flip the hand around to look at the nails from the client's perspective. If you're familiar with my video, I say this in every single one of my videos, but this is going to allow you to look at the nails from a different perspective and ultimately the client's view, which is what is really important. Sometimes from your view, it'll look straight, but when they look at them, something might be slightly off and to avoid them, asking you to fix something, just go ahead and make sure you do it right the first time, get it nice and straight, and you should be good to go on your shape. Now we are going to be doing a little bit of nail art for today's video as well, so I wanna prep my nail surface as best as possible so that it is the perfect canvas for our nail art. I'm using a sponge buffer from Profiles Backstage and I am thoroughly buffing the surface of the nail, making sure that everything is nice and smooth. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that on the rest of the nails. Just make sure you're holding the finger very sturdy and your buffer as well. You want to clean the surface of the nail and the hand make sure it is nice and dust free so that none of the particles get into your nail art i always love to use a lint free wipe and some young nail swipe for this step but you can always have your client wash their hands just with water and that will help rinse all of that off i'm starting off my nail art application i'm using the poochie's nails gel paint these are my favorite to use pigments with I'm sure you guys are familiar if you watch my videos, but this is the perfect gel paint to use for raw pigments 
or any type of product nail art that you want to stick to a tacky layer. This one cures in a tacky layer, which is exactly what you need to grab those pigments or glitters or anything like that. So I am using that and drawing a very simple kind of swirled design. I'm going to be doing that randomly on all of the nails. I've done similar designs like this, but I wanted to use pigment and I kind of wanted to retouch this specific technique with you guys because till this day, I still get tons of questions about pigments and how I use them and what gel paint I use for that. So I am using a nail art brush from Not Polish. I have officially retired my OG brush. I tried using it and it just was all wonky. I have yet to order a new one, but I will be doing that. But I figured I would give it a go with these new nail art brushes. They recently launched their nail art brushes and I am so excited. I was a little bit iffy at first. With anything that's new that comes out, I get slightly terrified, but I'm giving this one a go and I like it so much so far. So I might not even order the other ones, we'll see. But this one does have two sides to it as most of their brushes do. And so I'm just using the thinner one. I'll leave everything linked down below so you guys can check that out. But I'm just very lightly kind of doing a sketching motion for the design and drawing that squiggle. I'm doing thicker portions on certain areas. I'm honestly just winging it. I'm not going based off of any design. I am just fully deciding on the spot where I want to do the swirl and where I want to add extra thickness. For nail art specifically using a nail art brush, I definitely recommend you guys get your practice in as well. If you want a thicker line, apply more pressure, apply more product to the brush, you're gonna get a thicker line. If you want thinner details, obviously clean it off as much as possible with very little product on the brush and use very light motion, not a lot of pressure at all whatsoever. And you'll be able to kind of notice that as you get more into nail art and drawing, so. Definitely recommend you guys invest in a good nail art brush. I will leave my Amazon one linked down below. That is my OG brush. I've used it for five years. And like I said, I finally retired it. And then I'll leave this one linked down below as well. Really good quality so far in my opinion. It is the perfect thickness. They do have different lengths and different thicknesses as well. But I like to try to stay with a smaller one. Now you wanna cure these in the light before you go in with your pigment. I am curing that in my Kiara Sky Rechargeable Light. I am placing it in there for about 10 to 15 seconds, sometimes a little bit longer depending on how long it takes me to do the other hand. But for the most part, 10 to 15 seconds will do the trick. You want it to freeze into place and still give off a really good tacky layer. Now I am using the pigments from Not Polish. They are also new on their site. And I was so excited to try these out. It comes with tons of different colors. Again, I'll leave it linked down below. And for these pigments, I honestly just opened them all and I am using my makeup applicators that I have specifically for my pigments. So they're all stained a certain color and I just continue to use those whenever I need them. I'm just doing like a rainbow effect and then taking a dust brush and dusting that off. The pigments are going to grab only on the surface that has the gel paint. It is really important to not worry about it getting stuck on the nail or anything like that. Now you do see a little bit left behind on the cuticle area, but that is specifically because this is a silicone hand and not an actual person's hand. It is a lot easier to remove from a hand that is from an actual human. <laughs> so I'm just gently rubbing those in and I am obviously trying to just stay on 
the gel paint portion, but do not get scared. They will not stick to anything that doesn't have a sticky layer. And you will see how easily I can just dust that off with a dust brush. And then I'm just kind of alternating the color effect on each of the nails. I still wanted to do the rainbow effect, but I'm kind of just changing up the placement and just rubbing those in very firmly. Super, super pigmented. I love these colors, they're super pretty. In my opinion, these are a must to have in your nail art collection. You can do so much designs. They're just really good, the colors are super vibrant. So definitely a must on my list of nail art products. Now with loose pigments like this, I love to use both shiny and matte top coat. I feel like they just look so pretty either way. But for today's video and the purpose of today's video, I am going to be doing shiny. This is Gloss It from Not Polish. I am just thoroughly coating that nail with this top coat and making sure that I'm really getting into those areas that have the nail art, you wanna make sure you fully coat it and it seeps right into it so that it protects it and the nail art lasts the entire time. Again, very thin coats of this. If you are wanting to do matte instead with the pigments, definitely recommend you guys still put shiny top coat. The matte will lift the pigment and it won't be as vibrant. So always remember if you're gonna do matte, top coat it with shiny first and then do matte. That basically concludes today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you are a nail tech beginner, make sure you check out my playlist for you guys. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys later.